So I made like 90% of my Hilda costume pre-pandemic, and when the con was cancelled, I just kind of put her away and completely forgot about her. Come September, and I have my first social distance photo shoot. And I'm like, man, I would love to feel as cute as Hilda, so I'm totally gonna shoot that. And about six days before the shoot, I realized I don't have Rikugel, her relic, her giant axe, and why not try and make it now? Six days. Made the template, and let's see if I can make something this big in six days with a full-time job. Six days. I have made a mistake. Nothing. Nothing. Could you just maybe please make it for me? I am just a small helpless girl. Big X. Too hard. Props are not usually my genre of thing, but I like to have them. Like it's good to have something to do with your hands. Like Hilda's super cute, and I could probably just do like little like girly princessy poses and stuff. But she's also a badass, and I just need my giant axe. We won't be Hilda around boys thinking our way out of this. We will be Hilda around girls thinking, getting shit done. This build requires craft foam. Like whole rolls of craft foam. You will need this thick, this thick, and craft store sheets, and one dowel. And glue so much glue. You'll want to paint it. I mostly used a spray paint and then some silver acrylic and some brown acrylic for distressing. I don't like to do props. I keep making props. We do not know why. No one knows why. I can't be stopped. Let's do this. To start, I trace the full outline of Precogel onto 10 millimeter foam and cut it out. Now I can go back to my template and cut off the outer layer. This smaller shape is transferred onto a thinner 5mm craft foam and cut twice, once for each side. I repeat the process for the next two layers, the same goes for this roll in the center. My craft foam comes in rolls, so with my heat gun I can warm it and reshape it flat. This also seals the surface. To join the panels I'm using barge glue. This can be pretty toxic, so try to work in a well-ventilated area. Coat both surfaces in glue. Wait for it to dry slightly, then press them together. Try to apply even pressure to ensure a good join. Repeat. Repeat. And, uh, yeah. Repeat. For the button pommel, I cut the shapes out of 2-4 to four layers of 10mm foam and glue them together. So after two days, I've got the end, the other end, and this beast. It's getting there. The layers are all slightly different, so I round them down with my Dremel. I also use the Dremel to bevel the edges of Fricogel and every layer. It's a messy job. When everything's Dremeled, I heat seal all the edges with the heat gun. So here's my dilemma. I need to make the spines along here, and I was going to use Model Magic, but this has a 72 hour cure time. And then I was going to use foam clay, but that still has a 48 hour cure time. But I've heard you can speed it up with a hairdryer, whereas this one is not recommended. In the model magic, because I have a lot of it, and normally I can't use it, but because it is more organic, it should not matter as much if it cracks. Or the foam clay, which I still haven't used, but bought for Aimer, actually, which this is not. But either way, it's Friday night, and I need to paint these Sunday. Also, oh no, I think I let this thing expire. I've never used it before. I don't know what texture it's supposed to be. If your air-dried clay is nearly a year old and getting dried out, you can add a small drop of water. Also, eventually, I realized that you can just take out your entire lump of clay and knead the dry stuff into the wet stuff, and it kind of helps make it all pretty usable. For the spines, I roll out tubes of model magic. I press them to the layers and flatten the edges down, pinching to taper slightly and remove excess. The last two pieces are less structural, so I cut them out of normal craft foam and barge them in place. To get the details in the pommel and butt, I'm using an old soldering gun. This releases fumes, so keep a window open and mask on. It also ruins the tips of your soldering gun. 
I draw the outlines on the shapes, then dither inside them for texture. The dowel in my stash was too thin, so I bulk it up with a layer of 5mm craft foam. It won't roll this tightly on its own, so I heat form it for more give. Then the seam gets dremeled down. All the details here are made the same way, cutting strips of 5 or 10mm foam the circumference of the dowel, gluing them down and then dremeling the edges in shape. Once the bevel is added to the butt and pommel, they can get glued to the pole and head a freak gel. Then the air dry clay needs to dry for a long time. If you're pretty sad to me when it comes to getting crops done quick, is drying times. Because air dry clay requires 48 hours to be completely dry on the inside, as well you will want to prime it, and most primers will take 24 hours and most spray paints will want coats within one hour, but it's not coming on. Most spray paints will want 24 hours to 48 hours. My free Kugel was still tacky on the way to the shoot after being mostly covered in acrylics for distressing. So 24 hours to the shoot, and it just needs paint. So here it is, fully assembled. So here's my paint setup. I've got some old moving boxes for the back spray, and I'm using plastidip or protective, and I'm using this chair. After 40 of the 48 hours, I had to apply the protective, then wait 5 hours for that to dry to apply the Rust Oleum spray paint in Champagne Mist. While the head dries, I paint the pole in silver acrylic paint. Spray paint would have been faster, but the pole will be handled a lot and I want to avoid cracking. Two coats look pretty good. The spray paint should dry for 24 hours, but this is the morning of the shoot, so overnight will do. I add a bit of grime and depth by painting brown in the cracks and edges and wiping it down before it dries. I found some leather scraps and cut them to size for the grips. This is great because it gives me somewhere to hold and I don't need to worry about ruining the paint. I take advantage of this immediately to distress the pole. Everything is coming together, so now I can add the finishing touch. When I use resin, I pour the excess into gem shapes because they always come up. These two are cast in my paint tray and the perfect size for Freak Gel. After sanding off the chips at the edges, I paint them with nail polish. First, the most transparent glitter, then larger glitter, then red shimmer. Magical. And here it is complete. watching this video has inspired you to go out and make your own props. They really don't have to be that complicated, mostly just foam and barge will get you like 90% of the way there. And you can get some killer results. <laughs> if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching! If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. I hope that your own props go amazingly and show me what you've been making because there are no cons and I don't get to see as many things as I normally would and it's driving me a little crazy to be honest. Like leave a comment, tell me what you're working on, let me know what you'd like me to be working on, and if you feel like subscribing that would be amazing. Free Google? Free Google. Free Google. Free Google? Bye! Thanks for watching!